drop down to uh, nothing i'm going to go five four three two one hello it's russ here from four wheeling yorkshire Hi everybody, it's uh, Russ from Our Adventures and uh, I've got Lance Oliver with me today who is a complete uh, Jeep nut. I think that's a, a fair comment. I think it is, with three Jeeps. Yeah, think, yeah. Pretty much so. How, how, many, uh, how many have you had over the years? <clears throat> well, I started with a Cherokee in 1998 and I've had, what, three Cherokees? No, more, no, we've had four Cherokees and four angles yeah and renegade as well and this this is a 75th anniversary uh, model so it's got the the decals on the side yeah and it, it's hard to believe that it's 75 uh, it's 75 years it's 80 years uh, now uh, so when uh, our adventures did the uh, 75th celebrations for uh, Jeep UK and the North Yorkshire Moors, it's I, I find it very hard to believe it's five years ago. Yeah. You know, how, how time flies. Yeah. So uh, well, I remember um, sorry, I, I remember looking at the uh, 60th anniversary. Yeah. So when we were looking at the Jeeps then we were looking for a, a Cherokee then and it was the 60th anniversary when we were looking at that. And there That's, we are. Yeah. Well the the downside is time goes too fast. So what model's this apart from it being a a, a, a 75th? I think it's based on, is it Longitude? Uh, yeah. I think it's based yeah. on that. Um, and then they put a few extras in, so it's, it's higher. It's um, got bigger wheels. It's um, high gap. And it's got the, the roof where you can take the whole roof out. Yeah, the, that's um, my you know, the, the, oh, yeah. Um, the oh, yeah, yeah, home yeah. top roof. Yeah. So both panels come out completely. Yeah. Um, it's got a few nice bits in, so it's got lane departure warning. Um, Do you like that? No. 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 <laughs> 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 and, uh, I, 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 this has got it and uh, it's like he's fighting me yeah, yeah. yeah and uh, yeah. I, I'll tell you what I, what I thought about lane, lane departure he, ju he just hammered it home how close I think we are to driverless cars yeah yeah because you know all these things that all these things are coming together and creating one big uh, package of technology and I, I, I don't you know I think you know especially these two they're uh, they're very modern cars yeah well, with this one as well is um, what you find um, because it'll brake for you as well yeah so if you get someone that cuts across in front of you slam it'll, the it'll slam the brake on for you it'll give you a big shout first to mm. warn you and then it'll slam the brakes on mm. so um, it's amazing the technology you're getting I think my wife Lini yeah, when you watch this uh, uh, Lini I might have to cut this bit out but you could do with that on your car darling <laughs> <laughs> so, the uh, the other jeeps you've got then, um, uh, one of them is very special, isn't it? The, the the one you drive. Yeah, it's the Rubicon. It's the Wrangler Rubicon, uh, Firecracker Red. Um, JL. Yeah. JL. Yeah. yeah. And it's got quite a lot on it, so it's been raised um, 37 inch tyres on it, um, different bumpers, winch, the whole works really. Uh -huh. um, it's a, it's a love the car. Um, you can't go anywhere without being seen. <laughs> so you'll have people yeah. coming up to say, "Oh, you were in Hull last week, then? Yeah, you yeah. you were in York last week." Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's a it's a nice car. Very, Very nice, nice car. And which engines it got? Two point two diesel. Right. Okay. I know the I know that car from new, and uh, it was uh, it, we were at the launch of the Jeep JL working for. Uh, uh, Jeep UK in the Lake District and uh, uh, somebody who was uh, I used to be in business with bought it mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, I must admit you know it's uh, it's a fabulous looking car and uh, I'm, I'm very lucky that Jeep are uh, sending me a JL Overland on uh, Friday for me to review and have a look at as well which will have the uh, uh, two litre petrol engine in right yeah Yes. Is, is that the uh, electric as well? Is it the hybrid? No, no it's, it's just not a hybrid. Yeah. No, I don't think it is anyway. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we're here really to talk about. I'm going to switch the camera around now. We're here, really here to talk about this vehicle. So we're going to move over 
to the left and hopefully the, the sun doesn't blot it, blot it out but this is the new Jeep Renegade hybrid part electric part petrol so it's a 1300cc turbocharged engine mated to a six-speed automatic box and I need to double check but I'm pretty sure when it's on electric it's running the rear wheels mm. driving the rear wheels when the engine cuts in it's running the front wheels when it's in four-wheel drive uh, when we were driving it on Saturday when it was in four-wheel drive it seemed to be in petrol all the time uh, but I, I need to spend a bit of time with the the manual just double checking these things because you know what we said about lane departure earlier uh, the technology on um, these cars today uh, is mind-blowing and, and I've got to be I'm not a petrol head I'm a diesel head which is really sounds bad really actually uh, it's not as uh, clever as it is or as uh, smart but I've always had big diesel engine vehicles Land Rover product Jeeps I've uh, got the Toyota in the background there and I'm, I'm really used to a big old lump of a diesel and having got this vehicle uh, sent to me by Jeep UK which I'm very grateful for to review um, I'm finding that I'm a, a little bit of a Neanderthal man uh, that I'm, I'm such a you know setting my ways I find it a little bit difficult to uh, get my head around the technology so basically this uh, has about 30 miles worth of mm. electric it will generate electric as well yeah yeah yeah, yeah but uh, the guy who fetched it up from london said it, you know he'd filled it back up to full of electric on that journey but i've not done that yet so what i did on sunday i filled it up with petrol i charged it up i'm going to work out uh, during the week between now and friday morning how many charges of electric i, I put in it and how much petrol i use so to give me an indication but uh, one of the things I was going to ask Lance is uh, who do you think because this is a 37,000 pound car who do you think the target audience is for it and I, I, I sort of I pondered this because at 37,000 pound there's a lot of cars in the marketplace uh, what this has got is it's, you know, it's, a, it's a purposeful uh, small SUV 4x4 which can, can walk the walk and the reason I say that uh, in 2017 I did uh, three weeks driving through Slovenia, Croatia, Serbia, Bosnia, Montenegro back into Italy uh, off-roading trek in a two-litre Trailhawk and I've done the Pyrenees twice off-road coast to coast so I do know how good these are off-road and when I said that they're good they're very very good the low box is limited uh, but if you know how to work around it it's amazing where you can go and I have left uh, Land Rover Defender 90s and 110s for dead in, in that trail arc, uh, that we, we used to run so I do understand the off-road capabilities of this vehicle so looking at who the customer is uh, I'll, I'll ask Lance this in a second but my view is if you live in the Yorkshire Dales five or six miles from Hawes or Laban and you live in a village and you get pretty extreme snow and ice weather um, pretty rough conditions uh, through winter is this the vehicle that you would have at £37,000 to go into Laban or Hawes a couple of times a week and, and, and literally you probably run all, all, all the time on electric you've got to factor in the cost of charging the electric at home but you know it's um, it's a question the, the, that's my biggest question Mark it's not the car it's more about who fits the car so what do you think Lance? For me I, I, I think there's a lot of things going on for this car um, at £37,000 you if you wanted um, the off-road capability and more than what this has already got for that same price you could get a one-year-old JL yeah Rubicon yeah um, an iconic 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 vehicle 
that is going to give you everything. Yeah. Um, now, probably what it doesn't give you is the comfort that this gives you. Mm -hmm. So I would say there's a little bit less comfort in the Wrangler than this. And having that 75th anniversary, which doesn't have the off-road capability of this, but I've not been abroad in it, but I've been to Plymouth frequently in it. And it's long drive, so I've spent six or seven hours in it. And it's it's okay. It's comfortable enough. I wouldn't say I want to do that in a Wrangler no. all the time. No. Um, <clears throat> for the actual other oh, market is I, I would guess it'd be a bit of a jeep nut um that would always buy jeeps and like jeeps and would always buy jeeps um but the price is is a bit much um so i think I, the same question is who is the yes yeah. yeah, who is this designed for I, that that's it that's fine you know it, it's um i can't get my head around that uh, and I, I i'm actually quite enjoying driving it um, one of the things people think it's a small car, but when I w went camping in uh, the Pyrenees for two weeks in it, I had Defender 90s with me and I was carrying more gear in, in, in this than they could get in the Defender 90. Also, uh, when I came back from the Bal Balkans, I, uh, I drove from uh, Trieste in Italy, I overnighted in Germany, I was at uh, uh, Europort to get the ferry back the next night, so you know, and no fatigue whatsoever. Mm. I was driving at nine, you know, on the autobahns, I was driving at 90 100 miles an hour in the two litre trailer, and, and it was phenomenal. It was phenomenal. So, um, that's the question who's the customer? Uh, and I'm sure that uh, when this uh, blog hits uh, YouTube, uh, some of you will be, give me the answer. So what we're going to do now is just going to go for a drive in it because uh, which engine you got in here? That's a two litre diesel. So the two litre diesel in the 75th anniversary, uh, took uh, four wheel drive manual, four wheel drive manual. Uh, we're going to, I mean, you know, Lance drives that car and his wife drives it every day. Uh, let's uh, go for a ride in the this one and uh, see what you think. Okay. Okay. Hi, it's Russ from our Adventures. Um, I'm test driving the Jeep Renegade 4XE, uh, the hybrid uh, Trailhawk. Uh, I've been waiting all week to try and uh, get a break in the weather to do this uh, drive around uh, with some uh, sunshine and maybe frosty conditions, but uh, it's not happened and the car goes back on Friday, so we've got to do it. But then it leads you to think, well, this is what you should be doing because this is what this car's designed to do. This is this is the weather for it, really. This is what it's all about. A small SUV, cheap to run, amazing four-wheel drive system. Jeep's iconic ped pedigree runs all the way through it. Even you got the little Jeep emblems on the on the windscreen. They're everywhere. The infotainment is is unbelievable as well. Uh, yep, we've got uh, one of our local farmers uh, trying to get the water flowing away from the farm, uh, from the from the road. Um, this infotainment system, um, it's like watching something from uh, Star Trek. It, it's it's just fabulous. Uh, at the moment, we're on electric. Uh, we've got 17 miles of electric left, and then it'll cut into petrol. It will cut into petrol as well if I if I boot it now there you go the engines kicked in and we're in hybrid mode very very quick car for what you know it, it doesn't look a quick car but it, with the uh, 240 brake mix of engine and uh, electric power you know 240 brake horsepower in a little car like this is, is, is something else and it's seven seconds just over seven seconds to 60 miles an hour but that's not what it's about this is what it's about wet roads uh, traction um, just country running uh, and, and, and running in an environmentally friendly way which is what this car obviously is doing while it's running in electric at the moment we, we haven't cut yet there it's just done it just cut away from the engine and gone back to full electric mode one of the things when you live in the country and it's uh, a bit snowy and icy um, you go out to your car and sometimes you start your car up and 
warm it up uh, in advance of uh, needing to use it because you know the, it, it, it's thick with ice well you've got to think a little bit more about that when you're uh, starting this car because it starts in electric course it does so you have to convince the vehicle not to start in electric to start in petrol so that will warm the car up and by pressing e save down here it'll start in petrol and, and e saves all about um, if we were leaving God's own country Yorkshire and uh, traveling to a city that was a uh, emissions free zone we'd want all our battery power to be driving around in the emission free zone so we don't get taxed so what we do is we drive to wherever 1300 cc turbo petrol we get into the town and we release the e button and we're away running on electric again so by doing that it makes the engine warm up and warm the water system up and everything and defrost the car. It's got a heated steering wheel, it's got heated seats, but it's no good if you can't see out of the car. So it's um, it took a little bit of thinking round, how, how do I start the car up, get it to warm the car up? I mean, I could have looked in the handbook, but I mean, who does that? There we go, very, very tight, narrow little roads. This is another thing, we can, uh, we can pull off the road <laughs> In this and have no worries whatsoever we're back on engine and, and, and electric and it's it's this is what it's all about you you don't buy this car to be a, a motorway cruiser you don't buy this car as a city car this car belongs in rural countryside wherever you are in the world it belongs in Yorkshire Dales it belongs in the Derbyshire the Peak District it belongs where you're going to use its features and its features are an incredibly good four-wheel drive system the petrol engine runs the front wheels when it's running the electric motors run the back wheels when we need four-wheel drive the brain takes over kicks in itself and sorts the job out there we go next we've got the dog walkers all we need next after this is horses and uh, we've cracked it Look at look at the roads here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have a wonderful electronic invention I want you to see. see, see. It, it looks something like this. And we're just about to give uh, the Jeep Renegade uh, Trailhawk 4XE 
its final walk around before it's collected today. It has a 1300cc turbocharged engine with a hybrid uh, electric motor driving the rear wheels. As you can see, the motors in the front and the batteries and the electric motor at the rear. So basically on electric it's a rear wheel drive car which is quite good fun. The infotainment system in the Jeep Renegade is superb. Heated seats, heated steering wheel, all the feedback and information on the uh, electric drive is very good as well. I've got to say the seats are extremely comfortable, always have been and everyone I've driven. The transfer from petrol to electric, electric to petrol on the uh, trans transmission system can be a little bit jerky sometimes but obviously when it's in electric it's 100% smooth. Um, I can't say I've got any issues with the interior at all. If I do have an issue with the exterior, it's the very low front spoiler. And it, you know, it, it's, it's badged as a trailhawk and if, if, if it's a trailhawk it's got poor approach angles there, really poor. The tyres that it's running on are Goodyear Four Seasons. Excellent, even on green lanes. You wouldn't think so with that pattern, but absolutely excellent. Disc brakes all round. Plenty of space in the back. Petrol this side. Electric charging the other side. In the UK, it has one proper, proper recovery toy eye on it at the back. I think Jeep UK is so... Uh, um, so confident of their vehicle that they uh, think it will be towing people out rather than it being towed out. Unfortunately at the front end it has the standard uh, towing eyes which I have seen on uh, YouTube videos them being ripped out. You can buy from companies like GP uh, and Buzz, you can buy the Trailhawk front towing eyes, they're very expensive but you can get them for the front of the vehicle and add them to the front they look better. The shape of the car is never ever going to please a lot of people. It is a very boxy shape. I don't have a problem with that because I think it's very functional. What I do think would sell really 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 well is a Jeep a Renegade stripped down, basic, no frills, steel wheels, all terrain tyres, get rid of that front bumper, get rid of the rear bumper, move them up, great departure and uh, approach and um, uh, angles, uh, uh, ramp over angles, everything would be spot on. Get it jacked up another inch and a half, doesn't take any doing. Bigger rolling circumference uh, BF Goodrich tyres and pitch it 25 to 30 thousand pound. And I think in the countryside, people would go for a cloth seated, stripped down, uh, utilitarian type uh, vehicle. Very much how, you know, in uh, Italy the Fiat Panda sells. You know, you, you know what to do. Uh, Jeep because you know you you and uh, Fiat work very close together you've got an idea there that uh, might be worth uh, pursuing um, anyway it's on its way back uh, this morning to be replaced with a Jeep Wrangler I'm a lucky boy for this uh, last week and forthcoming week there you go